introduce myself. I'm a grown up go between. You need help with your attitudes. Let me show you just what I mean. I'm a dinosaur. I'm, a... I'm Dan French, Secretary of the Vermont Agency of Education. I'm a veteran educational leader, having worked across the state as a teacher, principal, and superintendent for about 20 years. I'm a big supporter of personalized learning and technology. For me, it's all about our children and the quality of their education, which needs to be delivered in a safe, positive learning environment, free from hazing, harassment, and bullying. Sadly, Vermont is no stranger to bullying. A key to stopping bullying is prevention and education. The show you are about to see is about a musical entitled Bully No More. As you see, you'll be watching the video, Musical Presents Bullying and Its Impact on Children in a Unique, Thoughtful Manner. Vermont has worked hard to implement bullying prevention programs and strategies. Age-appropriate programs are available to inform students and encourage conversations between and among students regarding tolerance and respect. A particular concern for me is the use of technology in this area. Technology can be a positive and exciting part of a child's educational experience, but we need to educate our children about the appropriate uses of technology on social media and other online channels. Please join me now as we listen to John Galemore talking about the show with Pat McDonald and hear him sing one of the amazing songs from the musical, Holding On To Hope. Point. Yes, it is. So, John, you're going to sing next for us, Hold On To Hope. And what attracted you to this song? Well, the, with every passing day of my life, I realize what a primal need hope is. I mean, in every right. situation, every time you see a, uh, a disaster, natural disaster, or people uh, losing their home in a fire or something whatever it is they they've lost hope right. and there's there's nothing more important than hope i think to uh to spur us on to continue living and so uh when i heard this song when i or when i heard the title of this song uh i realized oh gosh That's this great. is the uh, meaning of life great message for all of us yeah john galmore with hold on to hope okay If you believe in you, then we'll believe in you. Whatever weighs you down will fade away. Yesterday was bad, so leave it in the past. Forge ahead, create a brand new day. Hold on to hope like a safety rope. Rise above the insults and the jeers. Don't take the guff, you're made of stronger stuff. Your laughter will be music to my ears. When you're in a maze with bullies at your heels, you feel you'll never find the exit door. Take a giant step, choose some different roads, follow paths you've never tried before. Hold on to hope like a safety rope rise above the insults and the jeers don't take the guff you may have stronger stuff your laughter will be music to my ears sometimes you feel you're stuck inside a box or locked within a room without a key Dropped into a well, pushed against a wall. There's bound to be an answer guaranteed. Hold on to hope like a safety rope. Rise above the insults and the tears. Don't take the guff, we're made of stronger stuff. Your laughter will be music to my ears. Hold on to hope like a safety rope. Rise above the insults and the tears. Don't take the guff, we're made of stronger stuff. Your laughter will be music, your laughter will be music, your laughter will be music to my ears. John, that was awesome. Great message. I love that. Hold on to hope like a safety rope. That's it's cool. it's uh, more than a safety rope. It's a... Uh, it's a life preserver. Life one, that's great. Yeah. So speaking of hope, what do you hope will happen to this great musical, Bully No More? Well, ideally, uh, every school in the country 
would have access to the to the score and to the script and to whatever they need to put it on. Right. Because when kids get to be the actors and present it and other kids see them presenting it, that's powerful right. stuff. It's right. one thing for kids to watch grown-ups do something, but when kids see other kids do it, whew, that, that hits home. And uh, the idea is for it to reach every child in the country and uh, eventually the world, because the message is, uh, is so optimistic. Well, we hope this will help in some way, and I really thank you so much for being on the show. Appreciate it very much. Pleasure, Pat. John Gailmore, everybody. Thank you. For those of you who don't know, I'm Pat McDonald, the host of Vote for Vermont, where our tagline is Listening Beyond the Sound Bites. Um, this is a very unique show we're doing tonight. Um, I have one guest in the, in the studio that I will introduce in two seconds. So my studio guest, who is the writer and producer of this Bully No More we're going to be talking about tonight, is Elaine Davidas Sklar. Elaine, welcome to the show. Thank you, Pat. And joining us as well is Ben Kinsley, who's co-host and co-producer. Ben, how are you? Good, thanks, Pat. Good. So Elaine, could you tell us a little bit about yourself and what led you to create Bully No More? Well, my dad was a Broadway actor and my mom was a ballerina. Ooh. And all my life, I wanted to write and be on the stage. So from the time I was in kindergarten through college, I performed in shows. And then when I got out of college, I went to summer stock, I did dance recitals, and then I owned, produced, and directed the Greenwich Repertory Theater Company for about 15 years. And I also worked in all the schools and had a company that produced and directed shows for children called the Children's Theater Workshops. So I had a lot of experience really? in the school system. And I went on to teach, and I have a master's in education. And that basically is my, my professional history. But as a child, I was horribly bullied. Hmm. I had punks put in my face. I had my hair chopped off. I, wow. I was, it went on for years and years. So I can really empathize with children who are suffering every day right. from bullying. And so what I did was I took my experience, my education, my background, and my ability as a writer, and I wanted to write something. And I wrote Bully No More because I feel it's going to make a difference. That's great, and we are glad you did. I'm anxious for people to pay attention and to hear about this. What research did you do regarding bullying and the message that, uh, that are proven to work? Because we talked about age appropriate yes. uh, and all the things that Linda Johnson talks right. about. Right. right. Well, the research, um, being in education, there's bullying in schools, in camps, in the workplace, mm -hmm. in the streets at home, and it's rampant and it's everywhere. And when we first wrote the show, I premiered it at the Spruce Peak Performing Arts Center in oh, Stowe. Nice. And 3,000 children, their families, their siblings mm -hmm. came to see this show. Wow! So it was, it was pretty impressive. And after one of the premieres, it ran for two weeks and sold out every night, uh, Linda Johnson, who is the executive director yeah. of Prevent Child Abuse, uh, came into the lobby and introduced herself, and we met. And she said that she really, really loved the show, but would I change it? <laughs> That's Linda. <laughs> and I was a little bit caught, yeah. off, caught yeah. off guard, but here I knew that she had a position and right. she worked with children and I said I my goal is to have this make a difference and I wrote it with passion and I wrote it from my heart but I, perhaps I didn't have all the facts right. and so I worked with prevent child abuse and I changed it and I'll give you an example of one of the things I did the original name of the show was bully be gone the word bully was a noun and so what we were doing was we were ostracizing the bully, which was not what the show was about. The show was about changing behavior. So I changed the title to Bully No More. Right. Now bully is a verb. Ooh, right. Now we're dealing with behavior. And it changed the entire show. And we worked on uh, the whole show. We worked on things like that, trying to make right. it appropriate for children. Good. 
Yeah, I think that's a that's a, a message that. And also, as far as being age appropriate, this was very interesting. During the premiere, as I said, there were mo mainly younger people right. there, and I came out after one of the shows in the lobby, and there was a big group of senior citizens, and they came over to me, and there was one lady. She must have been the leader, and she picked up her cane and she started poking me with her cane and she said you listen to me young lady you <laughs> think this show is only for children well you're wrong and then she pointed to her about a wow, dozen show sure. of these people she said we were all bullied 75 years ago and we had to suck it up she said That's this right. show is for everyone so I thought that was very interesting. Right. And that, she's right. <laughs> and she was right. definite, definitely yeah. right. And if you think about it, the show, um, if you take The Wizard of Oz or, or The Lion King, these are shows that are for everyone. Mm -hmm. for, and Bully No More fits into that category. Right. Well, how many times have we heard from our parents, you can be mad at what, you, what the person does, but you shouldn't be mad at the person. Right. And that's what this is telling us. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, an, it's an important message, I think, to make that distinction. So what um, helped you choose to, uh, to do the show here in Vermont as opposed to all the other venues that might have been available Well, I to moved you? to Vermont um, in 2007 permanently. A, I was a skier and I was a writer and I was played hockey and I swam. And so, and my daughter Danielle, also Davis, she also lives in Vermont. And of course, John Gilmore is a Vermonter. Right, right. So we wrote the show in Vermont and it was logical to produce it in Vermont. And then we had this amazing venue at the Spruce Peak Performing Arts Center in Stowe, which is a 407 uh, seat theater. It's state of the art and every weekend they bring in phenomenal professional shows. And here we had the opportunity to run it for two weeks, including wow. matinees, and we literally, we sold out That's every great. single night. That's great. Ready? Sorry. Okay, John, could you tell us why it was so important for you to be part of Bully No More? Well, uh, I've experienced bullying um, parentally. My daughters have uh, been the victims of it, mm. and um, not uh, life-threateningly or, or viciously, but they, they know about it, they've right. been hurt by it. Um, and I know a lot of other kids who've been hurt since I spent so much time in schools. Right. I, I see it all the time, all the time. It's a, it's a daily occurrence. And um, it's a real scourge, I think. And when I heard about this show, Bully No More, I, I just uh, was, was drawn to it because it, it presents a great message and a, in a great positive way. And uh, it can be very effective. So I, uh, I knew I had to be a part of it. That's great. I, and I'm sure yeah. it's going to help once we get it out there and people start seeing it and singing the songs. And the first song you're going to sing is Going Bananas. Could you talk a little bit about sure. Going Bananas? Well, yeah, I know about the concept as well. <laughs> but uh, there's this monkey who is um, a bully. And, uh, and there's a unicorn who's one of the victims. And the unicorn... Uh, wants to uh, have the monkey feel what it's like to be oh. bullied and what it's like. So uh, the unicorn hides his bananas. And it's very, very devastating for yeah. this poor guy. Serious. John Galemore with Going Bananas. <laughs> Bananas, 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 this can't be happening to me. I think I'm going bananas, they must be under that tree. Oh no, my goodness, they're all gone, one of you better tell. My head hurts and I miss them, am I under some kind of spell? Bananas, 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 I'll get you for what you've done. Just give me back my bananas so I can have my fun. Without my bananas, I'm lonely. You can't know how I feel. Without my bananas, I'm hungry. You had no right to steal. We did not take your bananas. You did? No, we did not. But you don't deserve to find them because you're a neighborhood block. Okay, I get it, I get it, I get it. So maybe I can change my ways. Not say it will happen tomorrow. It may take a couple of days. Just help me find my bananas. I promise not to tease. I really need my bananas. Look, I'm changing. I'll even say please. Bananas, bananas, bananas. This can't be happening to me. I really need my bananas. Oh, hey, where can they possibly? Where can they possibly? Where can they possibly be? 
Okay, so you also found a publisher for Bully No More, and uh, I think we need to talk a lot about the publisher because that's how people can find out about the um, getting the rights to the to do the play and stuff. So why don't you talk about them? Well, the publisher is Tams Whitmark, and it's a wonderful story how we got to them. It's a miracle, and it's going to help tens of thousands of children because of just a moment. Um, Tams Whitmark is the foremost publisher of Broadway musicals in the world. And when I produced the show, I wanted to offer it not just to that one group, but I wanted to offer it all over Vermont and also nationally and eventually even to Canada. So I thought, well, I don't really know about royalties because when you charge a school or a camp or a youth group, you have to look at the number of seats in your auditorium, mm. the cost of the ticket, and how many, uh, how many nights you're going to produce that show. And I had no idea how the, how the algorithm would work. So why did I choose out of thousands and thousands of publishers, why did I pick Tams Whitmark? Going back, when I was in high school, I was in the play, You Can't Take It With You. Mm. And the first day, we all sat on the stage, and I remember the director, Mrs. Pentelary, she said, I want to go around in a circle, we don't know each other, and she says, and I want to hear about you. Tell me about what your interests are, but mainly, what do you want to do as a career? And everybody was thinking, you know, they kind of were caught off guard and one said, oh, I want to be a doctor or a lawyer or a scientist or, or whatever. When they got to me, I never hesitated. I said, when I graduate college, I am going to write a musical that will be published by Tams Whitmark. There you go. And this is decades later. So who would I call <laughs> to find out about the algorithm? And how but did you Tams know Whitmark? about Tams Whitmark in because, the first place? Well, because I owned the Greenwich Repertory Theater, which was mainly, we mainly did musicals, oh. and I had licensed oh, many, many shows right. from yeah. Tams Whitmark. Yeah. I mean, I knew them yeah. from being, from a child. So that's how, that's how I decided to do that. So I call up Tams Whitmark, and I explain what I'm trying to do, and the woman who answered the phone said, I really don't know where to direct you. She said, would it be okay if I gave you the president's email? <laughs> Let I me said, think about that. I said, that would be very okay. So the algorithm went out the door, and I immediately sent him the script, and I sent the music, and then I wrote him an email, and the end result was he read it, he thought it was timely, he thought the songs were empowering, he thought the story was terrific, and he said that he wanted to publish the show. And the way he phrased it, he said, would you be interested in having Tams Whitmark publish this musical? Yeah, hello. <laughs> said, absolutely, yeah, and that's how we got our publisher. Good for you. That's great. Well, you just mentioned the music, and obviously the songs in a musical are an integral part of the show, so what, what messages do they deliver um, to help, you know, get, your, get the word out about the show and its message? Yeah, I gotta find it. And um, I, I also need to know, how many songs does uh, John sing? And, do you sing in them? Who's singing the songs in the shows mostly? Is that John? Well, the CD that we made for right. Tams Whitmark, we actually rented a professional studio, uh -huh. and we hired uh, Dwight and Nicole, who are very well known in Burlington, oh. and she was a uh, finalist on The Voice. Oh. And John sang, I and I sang, and my daughter Danielle right. sang, and the five of us played the nine parts. Right. And then the music, we just sang, and then the music was sent to Utah, and Warner Brothers Studios musicians, they did the background oh, for it. Right. And then a former uh, Disney artist did the logo. So that's how we got the so whole thing together. So either you or John or your daughter wrote, either together or singly, wrote all of this music? I wrote the book and most of the lyrics, and um, John wrote a lot of the music. Okay. I wrote some of the music, Excellent. and my daughter wrote, um, she wrote one song. Yeah, and but each of them, as we've gone through, the, they all have a message. Yes. They, to supporting the they, they bullying do, no more. They, they do, and the, the message is that bullying is bad behavior, and it, and it has to change. And in the songs we say, you never give up, you hold on to hope, hope. even though we do not live in a perfect world. Mm. And that is true. That's true. <laughs> so what, 
um, led you to choose Prevent Child Abuse Vermont as one of the recipients of a percentage of the, the revenue generated by um, the show. And in full disclosure, Pat is a member yes, of the I'm, board I, of directors. I will, uh, <laughs> yes, I actually admitted that in, in my interview with, with uh, Linda, because that's important. Yeah. Right. Well, I knew immediately that the show was going to have an effect on the performers right. and the audience, but I wanted to do something more. And once I met Linda, mm. And I saw what Prevent Child Abuse does, how they help children every single day, mm -hmm. and more so how the funding to do these things is so limited. They, mm -hmm. they really are in constant need of help. And so I thought, well, maybe I can work something out. So I contacted TAMS, and they agreed to give 50% of their royalties back to PCAVT for their healthy relationship programs. And they have programs that are local and national. And then we, as the creators, myself and John and Danielle, we also agreed that we would give a portion of what we got back to PCABT in perpetuity. And if you think about it, once this show gets out there, because when, when the president and CEO of TAMS published this, he said, I honestly believe that this show could be as popular in the future right. as Charlie Brown and Sound of Music. And you think about it, if 5,000 schools, that's not even a lot did the show, think of what would come back right. to prevent child abuse Vermont. And of course our future goal, which is down the road, is that if this does become popular, we will do an animated film, a full length animated film with nine stars. Once you do that, you join the Sesame Street group, right. kind of, in a way, right. we could have a clothing line. We could have, we could, I mean, yeah. I have no, great I dreams. We could have I a clothing line. We will do product endorsements. We will do video games and toys and games. This can be a, a cottage industry, but what it will do for children is phenomenal. Yeah. And I, I don't know if you've ever met the staff at PC, but as passionate as Linda is, it's all reflected in the staff. Every one of them is as passionate as she is, which is really why I've stayed on so long. Yes, yes. Great place. Go ahead. Bye <laughs> well, uh, uh, Pat keeps raving about um, John Gilmore, and I think a lot of people in Vermont can. Um, but how did you come to, to partner with him to create a lot of these musical scores? I think you said almost all but one of the right. musical notes in the play um, is involves him in some way. Like you, you know, there's a... There's a song in Hello Dolly, and it's called It Only Takes a Moment. Right. And my that. life is completely based on moments. And I think if we think about it, really, major decisions that we make in our mm -hmm. lives just happen. We yep. just happen to turn a corner or something. Yep. And that's how I met John. Uh, when I moved to Vermont, as I said, I played hockey, and I, I skied, and I used to swim laps every day. And I thought, you know, I really want to meet some people, because I'm kind of here on my own. So I joined a swim class at Top Notch Resort in Stowe on the Mountain Road. And one day, the weather was horrible. And I went. I was the only one in the class. So the instructor was Amy Noyes and who does a lot of radio mm -hmm. and you yep. know she's yeah. a hockey oh, player too nice. so we had a lot in common and she said Elaine she said what um, what brought you here I mean what is your career what are you going to do here and I said well actually I'm a novelist I've written a novel and I said and I'm a playwright and I said I'm looking for someone to partner with hmm. and she said I have just the person wow. She, and if there were more people in the class, this conversation would never have happened. And of course, that person was John Gailmore. So I called John up, and he came over, and we sat, and we started to write, and that was it. We wrote okay. the musical, Bully No More, and we just clicked. I mean, I would write lyrics or some music. He would write music. He would do work on this and that, and it was just an amazing um, relationship. And John is, I cannot tell you how much I admire John. He has done... Uh, musical workshops with children from the ages of kindergarten right through right. Uh, high school, college. He's worked with corporations. Uh, John toured with the Burlington Symphony. He's released, I think, six albums. And he even represented Vermont and ran and carried the torch to Atlanta for the Olympics oh, no kidding. and represented the state of Vermont um, at the Kennedy Center for their 25th anniversary. I love so, it. Well, he's such a great man. I was so impressed. He is a terrific Still. guy, and we had so much fun. We just had great fun. I would bring the, the, the bagels, and he would bring the coffee, That's and it was, it was a wonderful relationship. So I feel very honored to have written this with him. Well, I, I think that's reflected, too. And, you know, we talk about creative works. If you, if you don't have fun doing it, right? right 
um, you can tell in the end product, right? It, it's all about are, are you doing something you're passionate about? Are you doing something that you find engaging? And I think that tells in, in the end product. Well, my attitude is about life in general is that you have to enjoy, like you said, you have to enjoy the ride. Right. Because if you're just going for the top dollar, if you're just going for success, whatever success means to you, first of all, most of us never reach that. And the people who do reach suddenly say, well, what do I do now? Right. You know, and this isn't as great as I thought. Yeah. I mean, I love to write, and I love to be part of things like this. So. I truly believe that Bully No More is going to be an international success. Mm -hmm. There's no question in my mind. But that's not the, the goal. The goal is to just get it out to some of the schools, right. to, help to help some the children, kids. to help the kids. Yeah. If I can help 100,000, right. that's great. If I can help one, that's great too. Right. Well, those of you who follow me on Facebook know that we went to John Gale. He was just delightful. I was very impressed. So um, could you talk a little bit about your daughter? You've mentioned her, Daniel Davis, and how she came to be part of the, the trio here. Well, I'm so proud of my daughter. Danielle has a master's in science with a focus in, in mathematics, and she teaches math in the uh, Stowe Middle School. Yeah. But she's an accomplished writer. She's won awards. She's written a novel. She's on the board of directors for the Stowe Theater Guild, and this summer, right. Uh, I had the privilege of seeing almost every production, um, every show she directed Hello Dolly oh, and it nice. was just wonderful. Nice. So she has tremendous ability in editing and there was just nobody else I could think of to, you know, edit the book and the lyrics and then she wrote one of the songs, Rabbit Rabbit. So she's very, very ah, talented right. and she has, she's definitely had um, experience with schools and with bullying and she has four wonderfully talented musical sons, of which of course I am extremely <laughs> proud. Um, I understand. Ha Harry, Sam, Jack, and Charlie. And uh, they're very gifted. And so she's had that experience being in the school. She's been in the schools for years. That's great. So she understands bullying. Oh, definitely understands I'm it. I'm sure. Yes. Well, this is, I mean, this is such a timely subject, um, you know, both now and we have a whole new dimension to um, mm -hmm. bullying, which is online uh, bullying through the yes. internet. And it's not something you see. It's not what, the way that it used to be, where you could see something happening in the hallways in school. Now you, you can't see that all the time because it's not happening yep. in the school hallway. It's happening before school or after right. school. And it's not as visible, perhaps, as it used to be. Um, so what, what message are you hoping to get across to parents, to young people, um, to uh, educators, you know, through a, uh, a play like this that has a message to it? Well, bullying is not okay. And parents have to pay more attention to their children. I, I think uh, they, get in a, they get in a routine of what they have to do, and if the, if the kids are pl off playing a video game or they're off by themselves doing homework, whatever, the, the attention is not the same. The right. family is not the same. And if a parent notices or even slightly believes that their child is being bullied or if their child is a bully, mm. they must step in. And what I don't think a lot of people realize is there's 160,000 thousand children who do not go to school every day because they are terrified of what they might have to face. So, you know, Bully No More is a perfect musical because it, it educates, but it doesn't preach. Right. And it's right. very entertaining. So it's definitely going to hit a nerve and it's definitely going to make an impression on kids. Yeah. You know, you mentioned something um, which I hadn't thought about before, but the parent looking to make sure their child is not the bully. Mm -hmm. Yes. I ha I've been thinking about the child who is bullied, but the parents need to step in if they think their child is a charmer. Yes. Well, and that's, nice. that's a difficult position, too, because sure, no, no parent wants to believe that their child is the bully, right? Right. right. And, and I don't know how you deal with that, but I'm sure um, somebody's there to help you, I hope, to t teach a parent how to deal with that. Well, that's why we need adults yep. to come into the mix. And in this show, we have the dinosaur who is the adult. Yeah. Yeah. So um, we've been talking about, in general, the, the, the musical. But could you share with us the storyline itself, what it's about? Yes. The, um, 
The setting is in another universe, and the planet is called the land between. And Dinosaur, who is, as I said, the adult right. in the mix, you must have an adult. The dinosaur is traveling around through the galaxies, and the rocket ship malfunctions, and Dinosaur crash lands and gets to meet the bullies, the lion, the owl, the rabbit, and the monkey, and the four targets, which are the skunk, the unicorn, the duck, and the elephant. And each one is bullied by the group of bullies and by individuals. And Skunk is a geek and a scientist who has discovered a solution to pollution. Oh. But the lion, who's the leader How of the bullies. appropriate for a skunk. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I just got that. There was, OK. <laughs> there was thought behind yeah, that. I, I can see that. <laughs> and, and so the lion wants to steal this formula, sell it to the highest bidder, but cannot get it released you know, by the skunk. So they, what they do is they decide that they were going to discredit the skunk on MeTube by saying that the skunk is trying to poison the atmosphere, which of course is not true. And then there's the monkey. The monkey embarrasses Unicorn. Unicorn is extremely insecure. And the bullies make believe that Unicorn doesn't exist. Not there. And the land between this planet is the only place in the entire in galaxy, in all the galaxies, where a mythological creature such as Unicorn can be seen. So not to be seen, to be ignored, is absolutely devastating. Mm. Then there's Duck. Duck is dyslexic. And Owl, who is very smart, is not wise and makes fun of the fact that Duck cannot read. And the last characters are um, the rabbit. The rabbit is this little guy, uh, or woman, doesn't matter, division one athlete, and tortures elephant because elephant is overweight and somewhat clumsy. But in the end, each one of the bullies has an experience that helps them change their behavior, and at the end, they all agree to bully no more. Nice. Cool. Very cool. Where were they in my high school? I asked you. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I like how um, how they kind of all fit in different groups, how the animals kind of fit in, you know, if you walk down, you know, a high school hallway, you could see some of those groups forming. Right. You know, you have the... The uh, jocks. The jocks, the geeks, the nerds, the... Right. You know, you see some of those divisions in in the, the so, animal kingdom, I right. guess, where you have. Th and that's really interesting, because when we did the show, we were surprised. Uh, the actors who did the show at the Spruce Peak Performing Arts Center were adults. Mm -hmm. uh, but when the students came out, and they were from young right through high school, it was interesting that they gravitated yeah. toward right, to their, the character sure to with life. which they either had something in common or with whom they had an issue. And we never expected that. And every single show was the same because wow. we got the stories from the actors in the back. They said, we never expected that. They were, they were actually very moved by this. That's great. I can, I can totally see that because, um, you know, you have, like, a skunk. You have certain perceptions about a skunk, right? Yes. Same thing with a rabbit or a dinosaur or an elephant or any of those. You, like, and, and kids get this, like, because they know, like, animals are cool to them, yeah. right? And not that the animals aren't cool to the rest of us, but particularly for <laughs> children, like, they're fascinated right. uh, with this. And I can see that, how that, you know, would happen naturally. Right. Relate it's to very it. cool. Um, so uh, how can your, be or your show be performed by younger children, um, say, elementary school, who, who wanted to maybe recreate this at their own school? I think this was the most exciting thing for me because bullying, unfortunately, is starting younger and younger, yeah. it's starting when the kids are really, really young. And even though this show is for everyone once they see it, how do you get little kids to be in a show? I mean, they don't even have the facilities or the ability to do something like that, but it can be done. And it can be done in such a way that bullying is just not a one-time show that the kids are going to see, whether they bring someone else to do it or they try to get the kids to do it. What you do is you get the script. There are 18 songs. The teachers get together for a meeting. You read the dialogue to the first song and the second, etc. And you decide which grades would be best to do each section. 
and every week at, at a Friday meeting right. or at the auditorium or every two weeks, whenever it happens, you start the show with that grade that's going to do it. It may take three minutes or it may take seven minutes, but you go up right. and it's kind of like, what's going to happen next? Yes. And for that whole term or the whole year, anti-bullying is popular. Right. Bullying is not. So you're actually getting these kids to feel not just one day when they're not even paying attention, I'm in the show. You know, I'm going to do right. this. Right. This this is wonderful. You know, I'm I'm going to be part of this. And it keeps this. it on their mind for all those weeks, whether yes. they're in the show or not. They know they're going to go see more about bullying. Yes. So um, that's a great thing. Yeah, it keeps it as a topic of conversation. For sure, yeah. and I bet they do. So one thing that um, we talked about, you and I, that there is a discussion guide that goes along with the, with the script and the video and stuff. And Linda Johnson um, is here to talk a little bit about it. So I'd like to introduce you to uh, Linda Johnson, who's the Executive Director for Prevent Child Abuse Vermont. Linda, welcome. Thank you, Pat. Repeat performer. Um, you and Elaine, when you heard about Bully No More, you offered to write this discussion guide, which I've got right here. And I wanted people to know about it because especially teachers who might want to do this amazing musical will find that guide very essential. And could you talk about what you hope the discussion guide will accomplish? Well, I think it'll give teachers and other folks who are really uh, working with the students and, and creating the show together tools to work with the students because of course we always want to be developmentally appropriate and trauma-informed and we want to make sure that everyone is safe in doing the show and then in processing it afterwards. That's great. You also say in the guide that bullying prevention starts with adults. Correct. Yes. Adults are really in charge of life for children and they model and they teach and children are always listening and always learning from grown-ups. Okay. That's great. I, I think we forget that somehow oh. in our schools and stuff. And I'm, I think mm -hmm. this, um, what we're talking about tonight really emphasizes the role of the parent. Absolutely. Very the parent, important. the teacher, the yeah. administration. We set the tone. We make the rules, the policies. And then we need to share them with students so that they also understand what right. we expect from them right. and what normal is. Um, you have in the guide some, just some language and some words that I, I wrote down in a, in a very lengthy sentence, but I was hoping you could talk a little bit about them either separately or model healthy relationship skills, be ask able adults, and provide consistent and empathetic response. Absolutely. I couldn't have said it better myself, <laughs> but then I think I did. So. It's so important that we model for students what is healthy and what is appropriate, being respectful with each other, listening to each other, supporting one another, caring about each other, having empathy when things go right. south. Right. Here's the one I needed help on. The guy talks about the language we use, and mm. I didn't realize till um, we talked about it, the importance of language. When you talk about trauma-informed, that was really a useful lesson for me. Oh, you're very kind, oh, Pat. That was wonderful. Well, I think we're, none of us really came into this work understanding all the bits and pieces and how uh, our language really creates an environment one way or the other. Mm -hmm. It's so important that we use verbs when we talk about bullying as opposed to he's a bully, right. she's a bully. Um, it's so important that we talk about being victimized as opposed to being a victim because that doesn't mean once a victim, always a victim. Right. And bystander, also terribly important. Does that mean that you have a responsibility? Or does it mean that you are a witness and you might have a whole range of reactions to witnessing bullying? You might laugh nervously. Right. You might seek help from an adult. You might talk with your friends about it. You might reach out to the child who was bullied. You might even talk to the person who was doing the bullying. There are a whole lot of things you might do. You might shut down because once you were bullied right. and it brings it all back to you. Or you might be afraid that if you do speak up, then you'll be harmed as well. Right. And that is a very understandable reaction. 
we want kids to go to askable adults. Oh, excellent. Yes, right. we want them to know who they can turn to for support right. and who they'll be safe in discussing anything. It's important. Words hurt, yes. don't they? Yes. Um, you talk in the guide uh, about identify support, get to know the policies. I think this is probably for older, the parents and the teachers. And uh, bullying dynamics within a group, that's interesting, and unsupportive adults, speaking of askable adults. So when you're going to do the show, Bully No More, you really want to look at your school situation or your community environment or your church group or whatever it is, and you want to understand if there's been a recent incident. And so what are the dynamics? Are there kids in the room who were bullied? Are there kids in the room who did bullying? Are there kids in the room who were witnesses? You don't just want to launch the discussion right. and not really tend to those people in the room. You want to talk with them before the discussion ensues and see what kinds of support they need and make sure that they can go to right. talk to somebody during the discussion after the discussion and that they have what they need Excellent. for the discussion to proceed. Yeah. My last question, and I want to tell you, I read this whole guide and it is excellent. You really, you really do, uh, when you look to just decide whether you want to do this musical or not, remember you've got this guide and it's just perfect. You mentioned, which I've heard you mention many times, safe space. Yes. Yes, everyone needs a safe space to do this kind of talking. And so you want to talk with the students first about what, what are we going to need to make a safe space for us to have this conversation and get the kids involved in talking about oh, what they need. That's interesting. We might need to be sure that we're respecting each other, that we let each other finish sentences, that we listen, that we care and give support if someone's been hurt. We have to make it safe. And then who could we turn to? Right. Who in the school is here today that if we needed to follow up with someone about a, something that came up, is the school counselor here? Is the principal a safe person to talk to? Parents, aunts, uncles, cousins, right. who's out there in the world for us to get support Excellent. from? It's great that you bring the kids into that discussion. I remember going to a conference one time and they, it was a very difficult topic and as adults, we were asked to, to present those words mm -hmm. on, on the paper, you know, respect and mm -hmm. let people talk and finish. And mm -hmm. that was, I thought that was pretty good. You kind of bought into the, to the conference. And so the kids yeah. would, would buy into the discussion. Linda, thank you very much. I appreciate your coming. Thank um, you, Just Pat. for, by way of transparency, you need to know I'm on the board of directors of Prevent Child Abuse Vermont for several years now and love every minute of it. Thank you, Linda. Thank you, appreciate Pat. it. So Elaine, it, it seems to be a perfect middle school play, um, and maybe even like a, a summer camp play. We were yes. uh, uh, we had a guest on recently that runs a summer camp up in the islands, and they do plays and musicals and stuff like that. Um, but you said uh, high schools and community theaters should also consider doing this play. Uh, what do you think specifically about those venues that? Um, would really help to reinforce the message or whatnot. High schools and community theaters are perfect for this play, and that's why I said this is such a unique, unusual play, because it's the depth of production that determines the age. And high schools can put this on for their classmates, but also for their parents and right, their younger perfect. siblings and their relatives and their older relatives. They're putting on a production. They put on The Wizard of Oz. Mm -hmm. They put on Charlie Brown. They put on The Lion King. Right. This is the same kind of thing, but this show has a real message. And everyone will feel a part of it because who has not been bullied? Who has not been involved in a bullying situation in their life? Probably nobody. Uh -huh. So when the high school does it, instead of, if you, I mean, you're always noticing how kids are picking on other kids. So here they're doing something that's a, almost like a service. It's, it's they're performing a show that's l wonderful to do because the songs are empowering. They're not, they're not childish in any way. I mean, they fit every age. And the people who come to see it are really going to be interested right. because it's going to affect everyone. It's not yeah. like the younger kids are going to see sitting like this or yeah, right. the, the parents are going to be looking at their watch. That's not going to happen right. because it, it just <clears throat> gets everybody interested. Community theaters, 
what is a community theater? It's a theater for the community. Mm -hmm. And today, unfortunately, and I think we talked before about this, is that families are dissected. Families are not together anymore. Right. Mm -hmm. They don't eat together. Right. They eat on a tray up in their room watching a video game. If there's one parent, that parent has so much to do that, you know, sitting with their kids and doing right. stuff, it, right. it's just not an option. And if there are two parents, they probably each have a job, they're exhausted, they're coming home, they have things to do. A community theater should be responsible to even do this show. It should be almost like an absolute that every community theater in the United States should do this show because it would bring a family together. They could come on a Saturday, they could come on a Sunday, they could chew the, see the show, and it would involve the entire community. You know what I thought which was really uh, very exciting is that you encourage the young people to use their imagination with regard to the characters and the costumes. Yes. Uh, and that, I just think, is will just get them bought into the play and have a little bit of their creativity right out there for people to see. Could you talk a little bit more about that? All? The characters, if you look at the logo, right. are, are animals. They're young, kind of Disney-like animals. Yeah. But they don't have to be animals. They can be colors. They can be shapes. Mm. Right. They can be out of the imagination of the, the boys and girls who are doing it. They can be, you know, video game characters. Right. They can be absolutely anything that you want them to be. And, you know, we suggest that you can keep the names, which makes it even more interesting mm. to create yes. a character because yeah. the names are used within the show. But you don't have to have animals. You can do right. any, which is great. Right? You can do absolutely anything. And the other thing is about the show that's great is it can be done in a boys' school. It can be done in a girls' school. It can be co-ed. It doesn't matter because there's the gender right. doesn't matter. Bullying is bullying. Bullying is mm -hmm. bullying. That's pretty cool. It's like that interchangeable. I think I also heard that it can be edited to fit several different time frames. So it's right. not, you know, specific to one. Uh, particular time frame. How did how did you accomplish that? Well, it's interesting. If you if you license a show, generally you have to stick to it word by word by word. And this is a flexible show. So with uh, eighteen songs and nine characters, the show runs under an hour. And if it's presented during school, that's perfect because then the school yeah. can come and the classes aren't interrupted. But if you're going to do this as your major production, where people are going to see it, you know, later in the evening or at a matinee you can add a chorus, you can add a dance group, you can take most of the bullies and the, most of the characters and the targets and you can divide those parts. If you want more parts, you can divide their parts in oh, two. So you take the show from being under an hour, 45 minutes, 50 minutes, to being maybe an hour and 20 minutes. Right. And it's all about the depth of the production. It's great that you allow them to have that flexibility because I think once the kids get into it, lots of ideas will come from them. Right, and right. then of course in the elementary school where they have the Friday meetings for purposes, they have right. to announce things and stuff, all the kids are excited because they're gonna be up there, but it's only gonna take three to five minutes. Right. Now so you tell me, some of the schools have already, like this year, have already picked what they're gonna do and you've sort of got a solution to that if they've already picked this picked the show um what's your solution for them i think everyone is aware that bullying is rampant in right. many many of the right. schools and bully no more is a, a wonderful show to do as the major production but right. as you said many schools may have already picked their 2019 right. show right. you cannot shelve the bullying problem and this is a wonderful impact to make changes. So what you can do is you do it as a second musical, maybe not as elaborate, but one that can be done within the school time. And you get nine kids, they could be part of the choral group or they could be a club, and they put on this performance. Right. And I think it's really important because this is one of the only, if the only, full-length published musicals about bullying that exists. That's amazing. I think we'll get a lot of attention in this state because it's here. It's here, and I think everyone acknowledges yeah. that it's here. And um, as you said, it's getting worse because of cyberbullying. It's not going to get any better. Well, it's getting easier, and, and it's not just for kids, right? I mean, you no. see the things that people say to each other on the internet because oh it's, God, it's something you would never say face to face. Yep. At least I hope I hope to God no one would say right. a lot of the things that they say on Facebook or Twitter or wherever. Um, but it's because those inhibitions aren't there 
because you're not you don't have that face to face right. with the person, right? You can look at it; it's they're behind a computer screen, and I think that you know um, removes inhibitions that people would normally have in a face to face interaction. Right. Oh, definitely, right. definitely. Right. It's a big change as to what bullying was, say, 25 years ago, yeah, yeah. and what it is now. Um, and, and you know, to get kind of get, we've talked about this a little bit, but um, do you have any suggestions for schools, you know, that can implement? Um, there are any suggestions that schools can implement when they're putting on these types of um, productions and make it more creative or th- more accessible? Yes, I think that um, when they're going to do Bully No More in the classrooms, they should teach some of the songs, the choruses of some of the more popular songs or the songs right. like Hold On to Hope or right. you know, Stand Strong. They should teach some of those songs so that when the students come in, they're more involved, they're right. emotionally they're involved, they're socially involved, because they're going to be part of this. Right. They're going to belong to this show. Everybody likes to, you know, oh, I know her, I know him. Everybody wants to be included, and that's yeah. the whole thing about bullying, that it doesn't include everybody. And I think this is a great thing, be- and as Linda suggested, if you get the teacher's guide, that also becomes a, a lesson for the kids right. that the teachers work with. And then if they know some of the songs and they can sing them, yep. they'll go out and they're just going to sure. they're gonna love it. You know, when I first did the show, my grandson Jack was probably around seven. And when he came out, he said, oh, Nana, he said, I just love this show. I loved Bully No More. But there was one thing that I really don't like about it. And I said, what was it that you didn't like about it? He said, I can't get the songs out of my head. <laughs> yeah. And that was the great, that. greatest, greatest <laughs> compliment. Yeah, That's great. exactly. That's great. Um, I think, you know, um, just because we, we've kind of talked about some of this stuff, but, um, you know, we, we talked about social media and how the, the face of bullying is changing um, in, you know, the 21st century. I think that it's... It's not necessarily the platforms. It's not Facebook is inherently, you know, uh, is inherently encouraging bullying or Twitter is inherently encouraging bullying. But I think that it uh, reveals more of what's under, already under the surface, mm-hmm. right? Uh, you can see incredible good on social media yes. and you can in- see incredible, um, you know, uh, I wouldn't say hate, but, you know, there there's... Um, insensitivity yes and you know I think it just puts on display what's already under the surface um, so what do you think about using platforms that are out there to to get these types of messages to get right. positive messages out there like say like a school live streamed uh, For play. Sure. or maybe there was a group of schools that came together one school couldn't put it on but maybe you know, a group of schools could put on a play and live stream it out to everyone in those communities. Well, they did that when the show first opened. It was done by a theater group in New York City, oh. and they wrote it up on Broadway World. I mean, it was a it nice. said, "Bully No More U.S. Opening." So Whoa. they interviewed the woman who directed the show, and she said. Once I read about this show and I saw it, she said there was no question I was going to do it. So this interview was produced by TAMS and is actually on our own website Mm. because we ask people to go to, if they want to read about the show Mm. and they want to license the show, we ask them to go to, uh, it's tamswitmark.com forward slash shows forward slash bully dash no dash more. And we'll have that on the, and you, on the screen. You'll you'll be able to go there. Right. But we also have another website, and there's a lot of uh, interviews on that. And that's what we'll do if the schools are interested. As soon as we get a school that does the show, we will always ask them, put it on, me- put it on the media, put right. it on social media, so that the goal, we want to get Bully No More to go viral. Right. I, I, that's what we have to do, so that a sc- that places out in Minnesota know about it, because everybody has a problem, and here we have not a solution but an impact. We have something that can help, right. and we just need to start make a, a marriage, yeah, start right. a conversation. Yeah, if yes. Else. So yeah. um, we've run out of time, and I am sorry for that because there's a lot more to talk about. Elaine, thank you very much for coming. Thank you, Pat. Ben, thank you. Thank you. Um, thank you, Ben. E- Elaine told me that um, if you're willing to donate for this show to contribute that they're going to take that funding 
and put it aside for schools who may not be able to afford the royalties, may not, may have already used up their show budget for the year, um, which would be a, a great thing for the schools who are dealing with bullying and um, we could help them out a bit. We also have a list of endorsements um, at the end of the show. Um, all, a lot of people here in Vermont who names you know and others from outside the state. Um, we really thank you and spread the word. We'll see you next week. And in the meantime, keep listening beyond the sound bites. Bully no more. Bully no more. We all freak out when the trash talk starts. Everyone suffers. We're insecure. But if we got each other's back, you can be sure. Not a single soul gonna mess with a bond. Can't touch that. Break that. We're way too strong. We see that bullying's all around. It makes life feel unfair. It's mean that we have to hold our ground. Rise above it. Our power's there. Tell your family and your friends from around the way.